A title clash between lightweight royalty headlines UFC 302 as the Octagon returns to New Jersey. Islam Makachev looks to defend his lightweight title and his spot as the pound-for-pound -pound number one against Dustin Poirier. Safe Saud once again here from Fortis MMA for the breakdown. Islam Makachev was thought to be a, an eventual champion, a dominant champion he has proven to be. Meanwhile, Dustin Poirier, the only box on his resume he has not ticked, undisputed lightweight champ sets up for a great matchup. Well, you're absolutely right. This is high drama here. We have the pound for pound number one, Islam Makachev, an elite grappler. He's shown a wide array of takedowns, submissions, in his arsenal, but what's really scary in his last fight, we saw how sharp his striking is. It really is elite. He's also got an excellent clinch. He utilizes that judo, gets those takedowns. He's so good everywhere, Brendan. That's why he is the pound for pound number one. Taking on Dustin, the Diamond Poirier, a fan favorite, a former interim champion. Dustin is one of the best boxers we've seen in the UFC. He's got power in both hands. He's excellent at setting that up with great footwork, orthodox southpaw, tricking guys. Also very good on the ground, a BJJ black belt. He's gonna need every bit of that against Islam. Dustin has got so much experience coming to this fight. He's shown us time and time again he can beat former champions. Can he get over the hump? Can he finally get that undisputed belt? I can't wait to see this unfold. That's a big question that we'll answer at UFC 302. Let's dive into fight focus. And you mentioned the striking that Islam Makachev has shown. Yeah kind of rounding out the ability, not just a grappler, not just a submission threat. That's where we'll start with the lightweight champion on the feet. It's absolutely right. In this last outing, he kind of made it a point, right? I mean, and we're gonna watch how he sets this finish up against the pound for pound number one at the time, Volkanovski, okay? When I watch this fight, going back, already knowing what the ending was, man, it was so amazing to me to see how focused Islam was on landing this left head kick. He throws so many left kicks in this fight, only a few punches, shot one kind of takedown, but he sets this up, and as he said afterwards, I was really looking for this. And we're gonna talk about this. This is really the key, the foot battle and this little hand battle that these guys are playing, the tapping, right? We know we've done Volkanovski plenty. He likes to tap and get that range, and we're gonna watch these guys, right? They're checking the range here, checking the range, and this is the very beginning of the fight, and we see Islam, he's staying away, and then he lands the first kick, a little inside kick, but we see the reaction from Volkanovski. He keeps this hand up, and we're gonna come back to that. Again, the foot is just outside, okay? So that's right in the beginning of the fight. He goes low, and he throws a, throws a couple more body kicks. He throws a front kick, and you know, things progress. This is the very beginning of the fight. Everyone forgets about this, but I wanna remind our viewers. Let's watch this. Look at Islam here, tap, tap. Once he sees Volk trying to step behind that line, he stops him with that little jab. Gets Volkanovski to stop, he wants to push Volkanovski back this way. Why does he wanna push him back this way? Because of this left kick. And when we watched this, when I saw this, I couldn't believe it. There's that tap again, there's a little faint. Now here it comes. Watch this kick. Let me just freeze it right here. This is the exact same kick that he's gonna throw to finish. And when we see this, Look at the foot placement outside right here. Look at the hands of Volkanovski, and we see there's that little tiny bit of space right here. Islam is making that read, and we see that this is barely gonna miss Volk. Look at this kick, it's just barely gonna miss him. It kind of just grazed over, it hit his hand. Islam takes note of that, makes the read, and the fight continues, but there's another low kick. So we see now, all these left kicks and always fighting this position, going high, going low. Again, we're gonna see him trail this way and we're gonna watch the reaction from Volkanovski here. Here, we see Islam trailing that way and what's he do? He goes to the body. And when he throws that body kick again, you can see Volkanovski's hands are getting pulled down. He's starting to react, right? And again, we see we're outside that path. We wanna be behind. So we went to the legs, we went to the body, we went to the head once, didn't quite get what we wanted. Couple minutes into the fight, we see this mad focus from Islam on this left kick. Now here we go. Our fans already know what happened. This battle is so big, and this is gonna take place all the way down here. You're gonna watch every time Volkanovski steps, Islam steps. Every time Volk steps, Islam, Volk, Islam, Volk, Islam. And then we see that tapping going on, right? Islam wants to keep corralling him in that side. Volkanovski stops just for a moment. That's all he needs. There's that big head kick again. This time he lands it, nails Volk, 
finishes the fight in such impressive fashion. And we, when we watch what happens and we see the reaction here, again, we talked about that same little dip, right? And, and Islam made that read, but watch this. He's just barely gonna clear this right over the top. I mean, it doesn't get any more flush than this right here. This is shin right to the top of the head. He knew Volk had so much discipline. Volk is incredible pound for pound IQ. Right here, had that hand up the whole time, went right over the top, finishes the fight. I mean, this really shut a lot of people up. And this is the way that he did it and the manner that he did it and watching him go for it. And we're gonna see it one more time. Watch the reaction from Volk. Thinks it's a body kick, kind of gets his body down. You can see it right here, right? Gets his hips back. And it's exactly what Islam wants, finishes the fight. Incredibly impressive stuff against the pound for pound number one at the time. No wrestling, all stand up. This guy's striking is elite. Dustin Poirier is gonna have to watch out for that. It doesn't mean that he's just gonna wrestle. I look for Islam to also use his striking as well. We'll keep it with striking, and now we'll go to the challenger. What Dustin Poirier is known for is the boxing, but really the all-around striking game. Probably his best chance to beat Islam Makachev is on the feet. Yeah, I would say that. And, you know, when we talk about Dustin Poirier, we talk about this incredible boxing, power in both hands, but it's his ability to facilitate those opportunities inside the octagon and land that power that's really impressive. So let's take a look at some of the things that Dustin the Dominic, he's taking it all in. Look at him, he's ready to rock. Here we go, let's slow this down here. This was a huge fight. Crowd was going nuts, St. Denis, what a fight. But let's talk about what Dustin the Diamond Poirier does, okay? He stands southpaw, and we're gonna get into this, but he is a right-handed man. He's an orthodox fighter, and he does that to keep that lead hand in front, and he utilizes it so well, and we're gonna see that right here. So when he's facing a southpaw, which is very important in this match because Islam is a southpaw, he uses this lead hand right in front. And we see St. Denis kind of just coming in, but can I use it really mm -hmm. fast? Southpaw? Get southpaw? Yeah. Sure. So when you got southpaw versus southpaw, the left hands are right in front of each other, right? Bang, not, no good. But if my right hand is right here, I can just kind of pick you off right in front. You mm -hmm. got to kind of worry about that. And Dustin's so good at that. And we're going to watch that right here. He's just going to throw a quick little jab, kind of stop him. And now watch this right hook right after. He follows it up right away. So he's always touching, okay, with that lead hand. So he hits St. Denis with that, right? Now watch. Boom. So what happens is he gets guys to go away from their right hand. They start going this way, and then they run into what? The left hand. So he keeps them on the horns of a dilemma. You're going to hit with the left, or you're going to get hit with the right. And so we see it again. Bang, he tags St. Denis here. Here's the follow-up. Dustin loves the, the gilly. He's got, <laughs> got a hold of it. He lets go of it. Now here we go again. Watch this little feint again with the right hand. He starts getting guys looking at the right hand, and then they gotta worry about the left hand. So here comes the right hand. St. Denis kind of covers. Now there's the left hand. All right, he blocks that. All right, I'm okay, here I go, I'm ready to fire. Duck under, and this is Poirier's best shot, and I want you to watch this. We're gonna set this up. Look at where his feet are now, and you're gonna see his whole body turn. You're gonna see him do what a fighter wants. You're gonna see him set his hips, get his feet in, and it's just beautiful stuff here. Bam, right? And that's exactly what you want. You want those feet to turn, you wanna land that shot. He knows it's money. Follow up, bam, big right hand. Fight is done. Look at this coil right here. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. Right on the chin, boom, turning it all the way over, drops him, and you see the follow up shot is what? Is the right hand, and that's very important to remember. Here we see Dustin now with Chandler. This was a wild fight. The first round of this fight was crazy. Props to Chandler, this guy just goes nuts every time. But you see Dustin, he's so calm in the chaos. Here comes Chandler, all right, I'm against the fence. Here's one block, and Chandler throws hard shots. I'm cool, I'm calm, I'm all right here. Now here we go, here's another punch. I'm okay, now watch Dustin here. Ducks under, good defense, that's exactly where he wants to be. I got my lead hand. Boom, and again, we see the turning of the feet, we see the power, we see the rotation, and we see where he lands, right on the chin. This is his spot, that right hook. Drops, Chandler, comes walking forward, gives him that acknowledgement, here we go. And I just want you to see how good he is at judging the distance here. We see Chandler, he's gonna launch this, and we already see Dustin starting to move back. He knows Chandler loves that right hand. Look at him, he walked forward, got that pressure on him, and just sat back just a little bit. Doesn't get touched, and then watch. 
This is, I mean, this is what martial arts is about, right? I don't get hit, and then I hit you. Lands that left hand, beautiful stuff. Gets in close, throws a body kick. Look at him just trying to gauge a distance, get just enough space. He gets a little close, he realizes it, takes a step back again, gets some space, throws that, and then we're gonna see it left hand. There's one, and then I want you to watch this. This is just the intelligence of Dustin. He's gonna gauge a situation again. He's gonna step back, and I want you to see he's gonna take this line, right? get away from Chandler's power side. He's gonna flash this little uppercut. Again, you start thinking about the right hand and he's gonna land a perfectly executed left hand. He's gonna flash this uppercut with the right. He's gonna get a reaction from Chandler, just a little reaction. There's that right hand, just a little bit of movement. You see Chandler starting to react, right? I mean, when I'm hurt, I'm just, I'm starting to go spaceman hands out here, right? And now we see Dustin use that to step right off and look at him lace him with this left hand. Perfect left hand, right on the chin. So Poirier is so good in these exchanges. They keep going here for a little bit. It's wild. Chandler's as tough as they come. He takes every, every punch, and he's right there. And then in the very end, this just shows you Dustin's experience. He gets in here tight with a clinch. Watch him break off here. He sees the opportunity, and he uses it. Big elbow off the break, and look at this. Paints it red, man. You can see where you land. That's exactly where you want to be, right on the bone. So just beautiful stuff here from Dustin Poirier. He's so good in the chaos, so calm. He lands those power shots, whether it's the right hook underneath, boom, right on the chin, or it's that laser left hand. He's going to find you in there, and you got to watch it. He keeps you on the horns of the dilemma in between one thing and in between the other. Excellent work by Dustin Poirier. Well, the footwork is what led to Islam Makachev staying outside that foot of Volkanovski, leading to that big kick. Footwork for Dustin Poirier is going to be key if he wants to land some of those big shots you're, he's known for. You're absolutely right. He's so good at switching stances and manipulating guys and getting them to guess on what he's doing. And then you, you don't know if you're going to get hit with the right hand or the left hand. And let's take a look at this. And this is so important and big because, again, we want to go southpaw versus southpaw, okay? And Connor is a great southpaw. He's really good at sliding back and hitting that left hand. And we see Dustin's approach here. We know that if we're southpaw, like we just showed earlier, we're right in front of each other. So he's gotta kinda trail out a little bit. He wants to get his head off the center line if he's gonna throw this left hand because he knows that Connor's gonna throw that left hand and they both know that that traffic is right here, okay? It's right in the middle. So you're playing with fire whenever you're there. So watch Dustin Poirier here. He's gonna throw his left hand, but watch him step all the way off the center and he's gonna land his shot. His head is way over here. He's way down here. And Connor, Connor loves that punch. Boy, it works too, but he's just hitting air right here. So this is how he deals with a southpaw. We see him go forward after this. And then there's that body kick here thrown by Connor. And we know Islam loves that body kick. We just showed it. And we see Poirier again finding a way to win here. He gets outside, he grabs that leg, bam, he touches Connor, gets him reacting. And this just shows you how Dustin deals with southpaws. He's very good against a southpaw. And I mean, here he comes, that right hand's getting loaded. It's all ready. And Connor's like, nah, nah, nah. I don't want none of that. So huge, huge moment there for him, his ability to put together. Here he is against Max Holloway, and, and this was so impressive to me because Max Holloway, obviously a BMF in his own right, right? Such a great fighter and such a great boxer, but we see how Poirier confuses him. He's got the ability to fight both sides. And here he is, Southpaw again, and he's gonna take this line right up here, okay? He's gonna go right behind Holloway, who's orthodox, and he's gonna land this beautiful strike. He's gonna set it up. There's the jab, and we're gonna see, here comes the two right down the pipe. Boom. Okay, so he, we know Dustin is really good at dealing with both sides of Islam's switch. And we see him land that left hand. Great, and we're gonna see it again. Hurts Max, which isn't easy to do. Sometimes he throws it straight. Sometimes he loops it. Here he loops the left hand over the top, right? So he gives you a different look. Lands that on Max as well. We see Dustin here now. This time, he's standing in the southpaw again. But once he fires this left hand and he sees that Max is right there, he's gonna step through now to that orthodox position. And you're gonna see his feet. He's now in an orthodox and he's gonna launch this right hand over the top in a way that Max can't see it. Because if I'm coming at you this way and then I step through and I switch, everything changes and you're gonna see him land this huge punch on Max and hurt him, boom, big overhand, props to Max, got an incredible chin, we obviously know that. And so you never know where it's coming from. Is it coming from the left? Is it coming from the right? I'm switching my feet. And finally, this is just him and his combination ability in the middle of the fight. 
Here he is, Southpaw, throwing the right hook, all right? So Holloway is trying to deal with that, but he's gonna step through, and this allows him to continue his offense. Now he steps through, now he's orthodox. Now here's the right hand. Usually with guys that are uh, Southpaw, they gotta kinda stay Southpaw. When they go orthodox, it's a little bit goofy. But because he's really an orthodox fighter, and he's so good at Southpaw, he can step through as he's moving, and it flows really, really nicely. So Islam's gonna have to watch out for that. There's another finally huge right hand that he nails Max with. So I'm interested in seeing what the strategy is from their team. Are they gonna use a lot of that? Are they gonna switch to orthodox? Are they gonna use that southpaw? It's really gonna matter. They're gonna try to give him a different look because Islam's team is gonna study the tape. Well, Islam Makachev has proven to be a well-rounded fighter. We went through the striking. Obviously, he's known well for his grappling ability. And then also in close, the clinch. He's oh, yeah. won some big fights that started in the clinch. This guy's a Sambo world champion. He's got incredible judo, great trips, really good at hand fighting and manipulating the situation against some of the best grapplers. And we're gonna show that. Here he's against Armand. And we know Armand is surging, right? Armand is right on his heels, but they've already fought before, even though it was on short notice. It was a really good fight, a lot of you know exciting scrambles, but we just see this tightness with Islam. He's just so on point. So we see him, he's throwing a knee, and we see right here, Armand's blocking it. Armand has an underhook, and Islam has a wizard on the other side. No big deal, it's a clinch position. So we see this knee here, and Armand is so good here. I mean, he's not some guy that's easy to take down. So we see again, one underhook here, one underhook here. Okay, we're kind of in a 50-50. And now we're gonna see Islam throw this little body punch right to the ribs, right to this exposed area. He's gonna throw this little body punch right here. And we're gonna see Armand react. Armand is gonna grab his hand. Okay, he's got his hand right here. We see it right here. So Islam, he loves this. He loves to get guys to, to react and grab. And he's just kind of playing the game. That's what judo is, right? It's, it's getting guys to react. So we see that reaction. And right when he reacts, I want you guys to watch this. We're going to flash it right here. You see his hand open up. Okay, and we're going to get another view on this. His hand is on the lat. And right when that knee is coming back down, we're going to see him pull that lat get that Diashi Hirai throw, land right in the mount with the arms still trapped, trap the legs, and he still has a hold of that lat. I mean, that happens so fast, and that's just not something you think is gonna happen. That takes incredible skill and timing to execute. We're gonna look at it one more time from a different view and kind of see, he's already on that ground and pound, I mean, dominant position. I want you to watch this hand, right? And this just shows you the strength, too, and the power. Watch him open this hand up, Boom, and pull on that lat. Right as he's pulling on that lat, he's getting all this motion going straight this way. Not easy to do. Bang. So super impressive because he's going against Armand, right? These are the best grapplers in the division. Speaking of grapplers, mm -hmm. we have Oliveira. We see this game again. We're going to see him throw the knee. Then we see Oliveira throw the knee to react. Well, that's exactly what he wants. Before Oliveira can get his base back, boom, right back down to the mat. And this is what Islam does in the clinch. He gets guys to react. He gets them to start throwing stuff. So Islam has these ideas of what he wants to do and where he wants to go. And guess what? He can direct trap wherever he wants, whether it's the takedowns or whether it's the clinch. I'm curious to see his game plan because he's shown that he wants to send a message. You don't think I can strike? I'm going to head kick Volkanovski. Dustin Poirier has been submitted in championship fights. I think yep. Makachev said, I got to beat him some other way. But... His bread is buttered in the grappling department. You just teased it against Oliveira. Let's dive into it. One of the best grapplers we've ever seen, right? No doubt about it. Dominating top game, but it's his ability to snatch up submissions from different positions that really make him a threat. He's really, really technical and really, really good at ending the fight. So here we see him against Oliveira. Again, you know, we see that southpaw. We see that foot position. Boom, drops Oliveira. But this is the impressive part. We know how dangerous Oliveira's guard is. Okay? And Islam knows that. We want to pass legs right away. We, we just want to get the legs out of the way. So you're going to see Islam as he's crowding down here on Oliveira, and he's going to throw this little left hand right here. Okay, And we see Oliveira. He's got his defense going on. right? You know, he's covered up. Oliveira here, he's still got a leg in. Like This isn't terrible for Oliveira. Okay? He's got such good jiu-jitsu, he can hang out here. But we're going to see that right after that, right after that little punch, watch Islam. He's gonna hop right over and pass. So he throws that little left hand, and as, as Oliver is reacting, he passes the other way. Well, here's the problem. Where's that arm? It's still there. Perfect. Where's his head? 
He's already fishing for that head and arm. He knew that that was gonna be there. He seals it right here. He connects his hands. Watch Islam. He's gonna change his grip here and he's gonna completely change the pressure on this choke. Oliveira can survive here for how long, I don't know. There it is, look at this. Now, when you do this, he's changed it from here to getting a fulcrum point. This is almost like a rear naked choke from the top, smothering, terrible. There's so much pressure that I can do when I can use my traps and squeeze in, and this is exactly, Oliveira knows this. So at this point, Oliveira's like, all right, I gotta go. This is done, if I stay here, I'm gonna die. So he starts to give up his back. And we see Oliveira completely sell out here. And we see Islam, how tight he is on that neck. And we're gonna see, we're gonna see Oliveira, he's almost over. Like, look at that, his whole body's turned over and Islam's trying to get him back to his back. Now, here it is. We see the hand here of Oliveira. He's trying to get rid of this. The second he knows that he's not gonna be able to go to his base, I want you to watch this. And everyone's like, oh, he taps so fast, he taps so fast. He knows that once Islam clears this, there's no way out. And when you see, look at his face. His face is already getting purple, right? And you see him, watch his hand. That hand's opening up to tap right there because the pressure is so immense right here. There's no way you're out of that. Such perfect execution with Islam. He's so good at the details. So here he's against Tiago Moises. We see him, oh, this is the only control he has. He just has this, he has no hooks. All right, and if you've got no hooks, yeah, you're on top, but you don't have a real control. So we see Tiago Moises, he's like, I'm all right, I can handle this. This isn't terrible. But right here is the moment. He's like, I gotta get up, right? I can't stay here. So when he goes to get up, he takes his elbow and he brings it back down. And the reason you do that is because you don't want this hook to fit into this space right here. So you bring your elbow down to block that space, right, as you're building back up. We see Islam, the whole time this is all happening, he's like, all right, cool, man. I'm not worried about that. I'm sneaking that hand underneath that chin. And he doesn't get the hook, so fine, Tiago wins, right? He blocks the hook, but he's attacking the neck. And in that moment, he's gonna start working that. Look at his head position. He starts bringing his head lower. No hooks, zero hooks. Again, Tiago Moises, tough guy, no problem. Are you kinda on my neck, but you have no hooks. I can get out of this. We see Islam's body posture like a sticker, and we see how he uses his head as a fulcrum and gets it really close and down. And now watch this. So Tiago Moises is like, all right, you got my neck. Now look at how he compresses his body forward, right? And puts his head down. And watch Islam's hands here. I want you to watch Islam's hands. He's gonna go short here, and then now he's gonna move his head. His head is gonna pop back. Right, So his head is here, he's gonna pop it back, fit in the choke, and then seal it off again. And this is just veteran stuff. Let's watch Islam's head. He's gonna lift his head up, get the choke in, and then seal the choke back down. All the while, let me hook your leg. That's all I need. Now I've got your neck and I've got your leg hooked. So now Tiago's like, wait, wait a minute, what's going on? Okay, this is tight. And look at Islam, squeezing, choking, and let's just turn this over right here. You can see how tight the choke is. Again, the purple's already starting to happen and you can see this grapevine right here. This was the only control point that he had and he finishes this fight. These are the kind of things that Dustin's gonna have to watch out for. Islam is so good on the ground, he can finish. Even though if you can defend, he can find a way to finish. Dustin Poirier on the other side does have submission wins and oh, ability. Yeah. He jumps guillotine with some of the best of them. Yeah. Defensive grappling might be what he needs more than any other type of grappling in this fight. A Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, as Dustin says, always jump the ghillie, yeah. right? It doesn't always work, but he usually uses it to get up and get back to what he does so well, which is the incredible striking. So let's look at some of the defensive grappling. The guy can win here too, you know, and we're gonna talk about it. Here we go, jump the ghillie, baby. You know, it's all right, it might not work, it's okay. Boom, we're gonna use it to reverse. We stand up here, we create a scramble, and this is good stuff right here. He knows he doesn't wanna give up his back, right? So he's up against the fence, he uses that to defend, right away he's there. Unfortunately, he ends up getting his back taken later on, but again, that doesn't mean that he's out. Dustin has improved, he's been through so much, he's improved in these positions, he doesn't really seem to freak out as much. And I want you to watch this hand, he's so good at doing this, he's so good at the details. He's gonna peel this hook off. And St. Denis has got so much space here. This is a big mistake right here. All this space that he has from his chest and head to Dustin's chest and head. You want your head like Islam, right? 
You wanna be like a sticker on the body so that you can't create a scramble. And this is the mistake that St. Denis makes and we see him pay for it. Watch Dustin, he's gonna pry this hook and he's gonna spin quick, he's gonna stay on that hook. And even though St. Denis is thinking about chokes, he completely loses the position. So you've gotta watch out for Dustin, he knows what he's doing. Here we see Chandler get in on the legs. All right, we see Dustin, he's gonna hook the hamstring to try to create that leverage so Chandler can't pick him up. Well, we know that Mike Chandler works out like there's no tomorrow. And watch what Mike Chandler does. Mike Chandler is like, all right, I can't get this lift. So you know what, I'm gonna crack him down, load my legs, right? And I'm gonna pick him up, okay? And he gets him airborne, right? So respect again to Mike for, for hitting those weights. But watch Dustin, like he's so calm now in these bad situations. He never freaks out. He's kinda like, all right, whatever. And then there, here comes a back take, right? Chandler's on it. But again, little bit of what? Space is our enemy. Remember that, space is our enemy. Little bit of space, and we're gonna watch Dustin before this even takes place, here comes the other hook, but watch him. He's already there to meet it with his hand. He's already checking it, and now he's already starting to block it and stay on it. And this just shows you his ability in these bad situations. Watch him scoop that hook. Nope, you're not gonna get the hook. Turn back on top, and now let's just watch him work here. Boom, 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 nice ground and pound. He's gonna land some shots. I think he lands a big elbow. There's a nice big elbow. And then watch this. He's gonna take Chandler's back, and watch how fast he gets the body lock. I mean, that is impressive. And he talked about it afterwards. He knows that Chandler likes to explode. And Chandler just sat just for a second, like, all right, here I go, let me rev it up. He's obviously strong, but it was too late. And he, Dustin also said, I wanna sit my weight back down on him, so that way he couldn't pop up. Brilliant. We also know that Oliveira had Chandler's back for a whole round and could not do what Dustin Poirier does right here. Dustin Poirier completely extending him. Look how tight this choke is. Again, we talk about the ability to squeeze. He's got a great bind this leg. He's got another fulcrum point right here, and he's gonna finish this fight. So he's doing what Oliveira couldn't do. Oliveira did it to him, though. <laughs> so he's got that ability, right? He's got that ability to make it happen. If you sleep on his grappling, right, he's gonna get you. So. I'm not saying he's gonna submit Islam Makachev, but I'm just saying he knows what he's doing. He's been in these bad spots so much now. Look for him to be a little bit more relaxed. Thrives in the chaos, certainly, 100%. if he gets down there. Uh, it's X Factor time. We'll start with the challenger, Dustin Poirier. What does he need to do to get this belt off of Islam Makachev? Dustin Poirier, 39 pro fights, 22 UFC wins. This guy made his debut at UFC 125. This is UFC 302. He's faced some of the toughest guys, and yeah, he's fallen, but he's also beaten Max and beaten Connor. He's shown us a different maturity. He's got this ability now, and can he get it over the hump and really win this undisputed belt? You can't sleep on his experience. He's been there, and here we go. This was a huge fight for him. Connor had beaten him and embarrassed him. A lot of mental games going on. This was such a big stage. And man, he shined. And, and I, you know, he, if he can shine on this stage, he can shine on any stage. Just with so much pressure. And Dustin, when he gets guys hurt, he pours it on. He knows how to finish. He has the ability to swarm guys. And Connor's got a lot of experience. He's really tough. He's been in his own wars, but it's just too much offense. And boom, there's that big right hook, and it's over. So if he can hurt Islam at any point at time, he can swarm, he can finish, and he has enough jujitsu, enough grappling to stop something like a takedown and finish. And again, let's look at the punch that really puts Connor down. We talked about it all day, what is it? It's the right hook, right? It's that right hand against the southpaw, tons of power. So I really think he's gonna look to utilize that right hook in this fight. Again, now here he is against Dan Hooker. This was a war, a total war. Maybe he gets one of these, watch this elbow, boom! Maybe he cuts Islam, right? He's got so much experience, he can make it dirty, he can make it nasty, and he can find a way to win. And he knows this is his last shot. He said it himself. Here he's against Gaethje, the fight before. We get it, we know what happened in the last fight. Here he's against Eddie Alvarez, super tough guy. So we know Dustin's never out of the fight. We also know that he is an absolute dog. So I really think that the maturity that he has gotten He's really ready for this moment, and, and you know, hopefully he shines his very brightest. Just going through that highlight reel, the names on his resume yeah. are incredible. Islam Makachev is not one of them. No. These two haven't fought each other. It's a fresh matchup that a lot of people want to see. What's the X factor here? He's been a dominant champion. What, what makes him extra special? He's the pound-for-pound pound number one fighter in the world for a reason. 
Brendan. I mean, this guy has shown us he wanted to prove a point to us by knocking Volkanovski out with that left kick. He said it, you look at the film, it's there. He is incredible on the ground, right? He submitted Charles Oliveira. He knocked out Volkanovski. He's beating these guys, right, in the ways that they usually win. He's so good everywhere that even if Dustin shines his very brightest, he has different paths to victory. And that's what pound for pound is, right? So let's take a look at the champion's work. The number one fighter right now in the world, Islam, making his way to the cage. And here he is against Vulcan. We're gonna let this play first. And this really showed me his fight IQ, kind of just the maturity of Islam and just where he's come. You know, how he, you know, you used to see him wrestle a lot, but you've seen him grow. Here is Volkanovsky throwing this shot to the body, all right? And just barely gets out of the way. Before Volkanovsky even has his hand back, you see Islam see the opening and he's firing the shot. And what you wanna do is you always wanna punch to where the guy just punched. Because if I punch here and my hand's out here, what? I can't defend my face. And the fact that he could read that so quickly, right? I don't know if he planned that. He saw that opening, shows his processing speed and his fight IQ against the guy that also has some great fight IQ. So this is just a huge moment for him to win the striking in this first battle. I think he maintained that striking advantage throughout the fight, just showed how advanced he was. Here he is against Bobby Green, and he's just such a powerhouse. He's also so strong. So he's got the fight IQ. He's also got the power, right? The physical power to ruin guys on the ground. They can't get up. He's shown this time and time again. And finally, we're going to go through this last submission with Dan Hooker. And again, guys, you know, people are not giving Dan Hooker enough credit. Dan Hooker never been submitted in the UFC. The Kimura is probably the hardest, one of the hardest submissions to get because you really gotta do a lot of manipulating, right? And guys are operating at such a high level. But you're gonna see, he's gonna get this hand way up here by his neck. He stepped over him. This is just the ability to execute at the highest level. It, it's, it's so hard to get these submissions and the way he makes them look so easy, it's not because they're easy, it's because he is that freaking good. That's why he's the pound for pound number one. And I look for Islam to try to strike a little bit in this fight. I, go, what you said, I think he's gonna try to try to showcase a little striking, mm -hmm. but if things don't go his way, he can always wrestle. So uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what path he takes. Well, as the saying goes, once you get the championship belt, you get better because the confidence grows. 30%. Pound for pound, yeah. number one. That's gotta be an extra level of confidence that Islam Makachev is bringing around. Keys to victory. We'll start with the champion. Uh, what does he have to do against Dustin Poirier to hang on to that belt? He's got a pressure early. Look, Dustin has shown he can come back, right? Like, and he gains confidence. He's a dog, and he's barking at Chandler. What's up? Let's go, let's go. I think Islam needs to pressure him early, whether it's with the stand-up or the grinding or the wrestling or the clinch, and I look for him to do that. He's also got to utilize his grappling. And look, Dustin is a BJJ black belt, very well-rounded, but this has been his Achilles heel. He has lost to the most highest level grapplers, Oliveira, uh, Khabib. We know that this is a huge, huge thing here that he comes from the same camp as Khabib. They're gonna study all those things and that's gonna give him confidence that Khabib did it. He's gonna feel the same way. He knows that's a path to victory. So whether he uses it to tire Dustin out and try to win on the standup or he uses it to finish, he's gotta utilize his grappling. And lastly, use that wrestling to set up strikes. He, he's kind of showing us, you know, hey, look guys, you think I'm this? I'm gonna show you something else. And the last fight, he didn't really wrestle at all. You know, we kind of went through it. He's just, he was just looking for the stand-up. This fight, he's gonna have to scare Dustin. He doesn't wanna just stand there and trade with him. He's gonna have to get those shots, get him to react, and then maybe he's got a couple tricks up his sleeve. I think I heard him say that he did, and I believe him mm -hmm. uh, after what he's done. So I look for him to mix it up and try to trick Dustin a little bit on the stand-up. We'll see what the challenger can do to try to mix it up, maybe show something new. Tough to do for Poirier with all this experience that you mentioned. What's her, uh, his keys to victory? He's gotta control the range, right? This guy's so good at the orthodox and the southpaw switch. When he went through it, he's so good at switching his feet, creating these openings, and landing these big shots that you don't see. He's got to control the range, and he has the tools to do it. He also has to be proactive on offense. We saw Volkanovski had his moments in the first fight against Islam. He touched him up a little bit. He got a couple scrambles on top, right? People were going nuts. It was a very close fight, but, but Volk wasn't like walking around waiting. He was going after him. And the second fight, he waited a little, and we saw what happened. So Dustin's got to give Islam something to think about. Lastly, he's got to keep it standing. Look, Islam has lost one time in his second UFC fight. He got knocked out, right? Anybody can get knocked out. And if there's somebody that can knock him out, it's this guy with these two hands. 
He's got power in both hands. He's so good at manipulating his shots, landing those punches from different angles. We know that they're gonna game plan for Islam and they're gonna, they're gonna have some tricks up their sleeve as well. So this is his path to victory. He knows that, Islam knows that as well. And it's gonna be really interesting to see what happens on fight night. It sure will be. Dustin Poirier has been knocking on the door of an undisputed yeah. lightweight championship. Yes. He knows as well as anybody else, he's running out of opportunities. Perhaps this is the last one. Meanwhile, Islam Makachev wants to keep that strap, wants to keep that number one pound for pound ranking. Way to go safe. Thanks for watching UFC Breakdown. UFC 302, Makachev and Poirier. Enjoy it from New Jersey.